Today we're talking about the troubleshooting and maintenance of the 900 gallon per hour Solar River solar water pump kit. This kit comes with two 35 watt 18 volt solar panels. Things we want to check on the solar panel, either if we have a, a new pump that won't start or if over time our pump loses pumping power, we want to check this junction box here, push it down, slide it open, make sure these connections are nice and tight. This takes a Phillips screwdriver. Want to make sure there's no dirt in here or cobwebs or anything growing. Sometimes these loosen up in transit and sometimes things, uh, th things get stuck in there. This kit comes with a Y connector to connect the solar panels. There's two on one side, one on another. These two go to the panels themselves and this side goes to the pump. One thing to note on all of these connections is there's an arrow on each side to line up the positive and negative. If they are reversed, the pump will not run. So in this case, there are three different connections, two to the panel and one to the pump that you need to make sure that the, that the connections are lined up correctly. Once you line up the arrows, push those together it is waterproof so they are a little bit a little bit tough to get in there we want to make sure that we tighten the waterproof nut okay now we're going to talk about how to disassemble clean and troubleshoot the pump itself this pump comes with a outer housing that has a, deb a debris screen in it to release that there's two tabs on the front push those in lift this up it hinges in the back this comes apart Want to make sure there's no dirt or leaves or anything stuck in there. Set that off to the side. We can lift the pump out of the lower housing. Set that aside. Make sure this is nice and clean. There's no sediment or mud building up in it. The pump itself has a smaller filter in here to keep smaller debris out. Give that a little squeeze. Pops right off. Make sure to clean that. Make sure there's nothing growing or stuck in there on the pump. If we rotate the front of the, of the pump body 90 degrees, pops right off. We want to check to make sure there's no rocks or sticks or anything interrupting the flow here. Make sure that's nice and clean. Then we want to remove the impeller that pulls straight out. What we want to check here is to make sure that it's still spinning freely, make sure the impeller is still connected to the magnet, make sure there's nothing caught around here that could keep it from spinning or binding or any missing teeth. On the pump body, we want to make sure that this port is nice and clean and smooth. Make sure there's no sediment or anything dried in there. If the pump is, is put away and, and dries with dirt in there, sometimes it'll be a little bit hard to get it running again. Uh, the next season, in that case, you just want to disassemble it, make sure it's nice and clean, and then put it back together. You should be good to go. Although we do recommend giving it a thorough cleaning before you pack it away for the season. On reassembly, something we want to note is on the impeller assembly, there is an arrow and it says up. We want to make sure that when we put this back in, that up arrow and that tooth goes in correctly on the upper position. If that is rotated one way or the other, that can lead to the shaft being out of alignment and that can cause the pump to run intermittently or it could run during the day, then it shuts off and then doesn't start in the morning unless you unplug or plug back in. That's normally the reason for that type of activity. So we wanna make sure the up is in the right position. Then to reassemble the front of the pump body, put that almost vertically so the slots line up. And then we're gonna turn that back about 90 degrees, make that nice and tight. Put the filter back on. We also want to note that there are dry run protection sensors here. We want to make sure these are nice and clean and there's no corrosion or anything uh, blocking those. This is what tells the pump to shut off if there's not enough water. Also, if they are blocked, sometimes the pump will think that it's not in water and that'll keep it from running. So as long as you keep those nice and clean, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Now to reassemble the pump, we want to take the lower housing and note that there are these four posts that the pump will sit on and these hinge pieces where the top will reconnect. There's a divot for the pump outlet and a divot for the cord on this side. So the pump will set right down onto those feet, lock in there nice and sturdy, make sure that the outlet's in the right spot, note the cord in its divot on the upper housing. We'll see there's the complementing divot there and then the cord as well and then and then hook so 
Latch that right on the back there. Make sure the cord's in its spot. Make sure the tabs are good. Snap it down and that is all there is to it.